Corruption has become a major problem in many cities around the world, including Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Kano, with large population and high concentration of motor vehicles and huge industrial concentration. Lagos, the largest city in West Africa and the 22nd largest city in the world, with an estimated 22 million people living on an area less than 100 square kilometers is battling with the menace of industrial contamination and smog. The consequence is the suffocating synthesis of air pollution, single-use plastic pollution, e-waste and solid waste on the streets of Lagos, causing respiratory problems and other diseases amongst the residents. Well, pollution is the state and in the state and other cosmopolitan cities in Nigeria well, taking Lagos to and using that as an example. A study estimates that over 200, that's 20,000 people die every year in Lagos due to different ailments linked to pollution. But how can Nigeria really address this slow danger that is affecting the health of the nation? To help us provide some answers, environmentalist Air Vice Marshal Kenneth Iyamu joins me now in the studio to look at this issue. Evian Iyamu, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, Nigeria has the largest number of deaths due to air pollution in Africa and only the fourth in the world. Air pollution is called the silent killer. My question to you is all of this data, negative as they are, how did we get here? Well, it's not only we, it's the whole world. It's the whole world. You but see, our concern is Nigeria. Yes, our concern is the Nigeria. highest in you see, Africa. First of all, we, the, the poverty has a lot to do with it. Now, you see, the cost of cleaner energy has risen in the last, in the last couple of years to what the common man cannot, cannot afford anymore. They've gone back to, to firewood. They've gone back to a whole lot of this. Two, our uh, 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 laws and statutes have to be obeyed. It is not symbolic. It is intentional. You have to obey it. Now, you s when you drive on the streets, are you not embarrassed that some cars are just emitting, emitting pollution in a very uncontrolled way? But there are, there are agencies that are supposed to deal with that. Supposed to deal with that. There was, there was, there was a research conducted by Ezra Mobile. Ezra Mobile who said that, look, the, 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 the uh, amount of gas in the air has increased since 1990 from 450 parts per million to 600 parts per million. And that's a lot. Mm. That's a lot. The, we, you are talking of air pollution, you are talking of land pollution, you are talking of water pollution. All of that culminating. And the UN also told you that more than 90% uh, uh, of the world population is breathing air that is not clean. So it, it's a problem of the world. But our own here, most of the time, is self-inflicted. Hmm, self-inflicted, yeah. right? Uh, honestly, and the truth is, this data is quite troubling, and one wonders why this is not on the front burner each and every day. Because if you look at the statistics, it says, um, especially for people in the Niger Delta region, an average person must have lost about six years of their life due to air pollution. So now you've highlighted some of the challenges, how we got here in the first place. Yeah, yeah. But are we doing enough as a people and as a nation, um, big government or at individual level, to actually check this? Do we even see it as a problem enough to really pay so much attention to it? Yes, we see, we see it as a problem. But where poverty is at the center stage, there's nothing you can do. They believe that, look, they have to earn a living. So they have to burn. They have to burn gas. They have to burn a whole lot of things. No. So you have to move from. They, they, I mean, they have to be a consensus. They have to be a consensus around it and say, "Look, these people, what you are doing is wrong. How do we make it cleaner? How do we make it cleaner?" Now, they, they, there's a statistic that show that the gas you are, you are flaring can power the whole of Africa. How do you put that into an economic uh, uh, into an economic line? You need to do that. You need to do that. We. The, 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 the institutions have to show example. They have to show example. And if the cost of gas keep rising every day, they, ha they, they, they have to survive. They have to survive. It is even worse for those children that are below five years. 
That is yeah, it, we have the highest pneumonia death due to air death, pollution yes, in Africa as well. When you do that, the lungs, the lungs are affected. Take for example, open defecation. You see, it, we, we are gradually, we are gradually accepting it now into our psyche. It's a, it's becoming a normality. Nobody is talking about it. When you construct your your, your cities, you don't you don't leave so much space for you to be able to construct toilets. How do you want people to do? And you know, open defecation is one of the worst pollution that you can find mm. because. First of all, the pathogens are coming in. You are it's like eating another man's feces. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. So our laws have to be have to be strengthened. They have to be enlightenment. They have to be the the the, the this, are, this is where the uh, NOA should come in. You see, Nezra is doing a whole lot, a whole lot by taking the, by taking the world down down to the people. But they can only do this much. And not this. They, they are not this. because. You call it a silent killer. Maybe because it is silent, that is why it's not on the dashboard. We have to bring it to the dashboard and talk about it. For the Niger data, we have to create awareness. Now, if people are poor, first of all, if they are multidimensionally poor, they can, they can also be multipurposely enriched. Uh, 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 there is no action that is bad in totality. You can bring it back and put legality to it. Okay. And you take value out of it. Well, yes, we are trying to find homegrown solutions to this issue. Yes. I do know that the world over, there was that target of 2050 for cleaner energy. Yes. Yes. But we've seen the Russian-Ukraine war really, you know, get countries to deviate from that. We've even yeah. seen France, where yeah. the accord was signed, actually, yeah. you know, step back. We're seeing Germany now look in the area of coal because yeah. environmentalists like yourself would suggest mm. that cleaner cooking and cleaner energy in general, be it yes. cooking or whatever, yes. would help the world be better. So yes. now that we're seeing that things are changing. Yes. What immediate solution would you prefer to tackling air pollution? Yes, enlightenment. You see, some couple of days ago, the president went to went to commission ten megawatt of electricity, solar, a canoe, a canoe. What are you doing? You are you are saving the environment and you are doing a whole lot of things. First of all, you see, to transit from from fossil fuel for us to to renewable energy, it it is not going to be very easy. You, 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 you saw the other tender. We need 1.9 trillion US dollars to do that. Mm. But in the interim, in the interim, what do we do? We have to do enlightenment. We have to tell. The, we have to begin to tell the people. Have a conversation with them. There must be a consensus, and we must re-examine a lot of things. Right. We must re-examine the laws. We must re-examine the people. We must tell them that look, you are you are not harming the environment. That's only a, a significant part of it. You are harming yourself. You are harming yourself. Because when you do reorientation. that... Reorientation. Yes, reorientation. Reorientation. You're bringing them back and say, look, see, some people get in there because of a, a, a economic poverty. Create opportunities for those people and take them out and deal with the criminals. Ah, so we go back again to fighting poverty. If you can get them out of poverty, we'll yes. see an end to the 880,000 lives that we lose every year yes. here on the African continent. That's yes. what AVM Kenneth Iyam was suggesting tonight, amongst yes. other solutions. Yes. For tonight, thank you for coming and for all that you do. Thank and you. congratulations as well <laughs> to you. Thank you. Thank Elvis you. Elvis Marshall, Kenneth Iyamu there. Thank you very much.